Hey guys, Travis here with GameSpot Esports on the fourth week of the LCS. I'm joined by Chaos from Team Solo Mid. How are you doing, Chaos? I'm um, doing good. We just came off win like two wins, so. How's how's Super Week treating you besides the two wins? Like, is it was it a little bit harder for you to prepare for this? I mean, I know you had that bye last week. Did that help you out? Um, I I don't know. I don't know. Like it was the uh, first time we actually had a bye week. And also, it's it just so happens is right before Super Week, so it's really hard to say like whether it helped us or not. Obviously, it gave us more time to prepare because we didn't have to play last week. But then it was also like that lull in action where it's like, wow, it's, this is two weeks of uh, no competition. So, yeah. So I want to I want to talk to you. Game Game Crib Episode Two came out. Are you guys still not watching it? I heard you guys made a pact that you will not watch the show. Yeah, we we're not watching the show. Okay. Well, I'm, obviously we know what happens yeah. because we live through it. So yeah, we haven't watched the show though. But it's, just, it's just too weird, right? That's the reason why. Um, too weird. It's just something that we agreed upon because yeah. uh, we don't want to like uh, have the show affect us in any way, yeah, yeah. aside from just like, uh, I mean, drama is bad, right. period, for a team game. So uh, yeah, that's the reason why we're not watching it. All right, so I'll only ask one question about the drama then, because uh, on this episode there was a fight between you and Reggie. You know, does that stuff frequent? I mean, I, I think that on, you know, I was looking at the comments on Reddit, and obviously, you know, you guys used to have, like, scuffles or whatever on stream, but people, I think, for the first time are sort of getting to see how it is for a team that's got all the stress on, on them, and, they're, you know, you guys are trying to, to be number one, like you guys always say. You know, it's, it's interesting to sort of see this other side. So... Is this something that, that, you know, do you guys get in arguments frequently? Like, what what is this? Is this just sort of a thing that happened at one point in time and it's just how you guys do, blow off steam? Uh, no, arguments are pretty rare. Yeah. I'd say, like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know exactly what is a frequent argument, like once a week or once a month, like once a year. Like, uh, I'd say they're pretty rare. And, uh, yeah, I think that answers that. So let's talk about the uh, 80 carries that we're seeing in the LCS right now. So, so Cutie Pie's pulling out Draven. We've been seeing a lot of misfortune. Uh, what, what do you think of, do you think there's a like wide breadth of champions that are viable now in the 80 carry role? Because I know previously there was like Ezreal, Graves, and uh, uh, who, am, who am I forgetting? There was the trifecta. Corky, yeah. Corky, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, I think 80 carries right now are... Hmm, it actually took me a while to figure out like what I actually want to play um, for AD carry role because um, each team has a different, uh, I'd say, theory behind like what is required to win. If you look at CLG, they focus a lot on double lift, playing like Vayne and farming a lot, a lot, and protecting him really, really well. But uh, if you look at us, though, a lot of the times we're giving most of our farm to Reggie so he can carry really, really hard. Like, right now, with the split pushing meta, whoever picks up side lane farm, whoever collects it, pretty much, lets it snowballs all the way to our second tower, whoever collects that is going to be really, really strong. And that, that champion needs to be able to duel, number one, and be able to carry really hard. So right now, I'm playing champions that I feel like are still effective without farm. So I feel like M MF is really, really good because she doesn't really need farm to be extremely effective. And that leaves pretty much a slot open for uh, like anyone can pick up the farm and MF is still, is still useful. If you look at Kog'Maw, I think he's really, really good even without farm. And um, so that is my theory or like that's just how TSM is playing right now and I feel it's fine. Um, so it depends on the team really and how they think the game should be played. So I think a lot of people would say, and I and even I just interviewed Doublelift, and he said this that you two are like the best AD carries in North America, and he pr last week sort of opened this can of worms discussion about feeling as though AD carries were over nerfed with the introduction of season three, and that they're just he says he feels like uh, they're not in the best place right now, and they need to sort of see some buffs potentially. Or the big thing he complained about was like attack speed reduction items. What, what are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like maybe that's an overreaction and, and AD carries are doing okay right now, or do you feel like there needs to be a little bit more power given back to you guys? I think for how CLG operates and having him get all the farm, just one Randuin's Omen and a Frozen Heart deals with their play style, deals with it pretty much. So, I mean, that's just how the game is. 
and it's up to us as players to adapt because Riot's constantly changing the game to how they see it, it, it fits. And it, it's, it's our job to adapt and play what is strong and play in a way that the game should be played. And so like, I really don't complain about anything that Riot does because it's just my job. Um, like because Randwins, and that's why the reasons that I'm playing more of a, a supportive role as AD now. Uh, maybe not still like pure support, but more of like a um, like utility, utility. Yes, utility. So um, I'm playing MF and Kogma, the champions that I feel like are still good against these attack speed items, reduction items, um, because that's just way too cost effective against something like Vayne. So. Um, I mean, CLG is still doing really well with their strategy because they're so, like, practiced with it. And they're playing it against, I think, less experienced teams. But I definitely say that attributed to some of their losses because they're not adapting to how the meta is shifting. So week one, you know, I talked to, to Reggie, I talked to Special, and, and you guys sort of had a rough week that week. And it was sort of a... Uh, this is a, a, a new beginning, like, it's time for TSM. You guys were like, you know, we're not number one right now, but we're getting back to that point. So now we're, we're at week four. This is super weak. Uh, I know you guys just recently had a buy, but just out of curiosity, like, how do you feel about TSM's position in the scene right now? Do you guys think that you're, you're coming back with a vengeance, or do, you guys think, or do you think that you still have a little bit more work to do? Uh, definitely uh, more work. Uh, I'd say after watching, I, I mean, I watched the Star Wars or Star's War. Uh, Star's War, that's weird. Anyway, <laughs> um, between uh, the, the match between Wii and Najin Shield, and I felt like their play was so crisp. And uh, yeah, just like it was eye opening. I was like, wow, there's certain things that I've never seen before. Um, like Red invades against Kogma like 30 minutes into the game, and like really well prepared traps at like 45 minutes, in, like 40 minutes into the game. And um, seeing that just means that they've prepared, they've played the game so well up to that point, to the 40 minute mark, and then they still have plans past that. Like for us, we have, like we have our general like early game mapped out. We know what we're gonna do. We ha we have solid plays that we can make, but like our solidness as the game progresses definitely um, is lower than the Asian teams right now. And like that just means that they played through like what where we've been. Like where, or where we're at right now, they've played through that and far beyond because their solidness is just apparent throughout the entire game up to the 40, 50 minute mark. So um, I think NA as a whole needs a lot of work because we scrim against CLG often and that's just how good we are right now. And uh, like the other teams really need to step it up. Um, so in NA, I feel like we're in a fine spot. But uh, as Worlds draws closer and closer, we need to step it up as a region. That's really really good insight. I like that a lot. All right, so sort of wrapping up the interview, do you have uh, any shout-outs to fans or any plugs you want to make? Yeah, uh, shout-out to all of our fans. Thank you for your continued support. Uh, TSM Snapdragon all the way. Um, shout-out to our sponsors, Snapdragon, Qualcomm Snapdragon, um, <laughs> Kingston, HyperX, uh, Origin PC, Gunner, Ventrilo, Corsair, and Astro headsets. I believe that's all. And yeah, I had to memorize them again because we're switching constantly. But definitely, big thanks to all of our sponsors because they make, uh, they give us the monies pretty much. So thanks. They help support you guys so much. I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's really cool. They they allow you guys to come down from SF, etc. It's really cool. All right. Well, hey, thanks a ton for the interview. Best of luck during the rest of Super Week. For everyone, this is Travis on the uh, fourth week of the LCS. You can check out the rest of GameSpot's coverage at GameSpot.com slash LCS.